Well, what is going on YouTube? Welcome back to A Therapeutic Edge. Uh, if there's a little bit of wind noise and some other sounds, please bear with me. I'm actually outside uh, enjoying the uh, cooler weather here in California, finally. So, what's on the table? Well, this, this is the ZTO 357. Uh, this is in their new line of knives, sort of following the tradition of the uh, 350 and of the old uh, 300, which of course is the 308. I don't have that with me today. Uh, this is an interesting direction for them to go with these sort of knives that are leaning into their history of harder use. And I say that because this one, well, we'll get to the cool materials and everything in just a minute, but this one is assisted. Uh, much like the old 350 was, uh, the 357 is assisted, but it just doesn't feel quite as heavy hitting as the 350. Now the 350 is one of my all-time favorite knives. I feel silly that I don't happen to have one nearby that I can share with you at the moment. Um, so when this came out, I actually kind of stayed away from it. Uh, it, it. It just isn't quite what that one was. However, these are about $148, uh, and I'll got it, and and I'll and I got to tell you that um, I'm glad I picked one up because this is one of those knives that I'm going to recommend to people who just want a good, reliable, well-made, great materials knife that aren't really knife people. Uh, a lot of knife people, me included, are kind of done with assisted knives. They had a, a time and a place, but that's not really what I go after now. But for your average user, uh, a little spring boost helps in a lot of ways and often makes people really enjoy the knife more. So I think that is really where this thing kind of shines. It does have that. It also has some other really cool features that we're going to get into right now. The first one is that this is a CPM 20 CV blade. Uh, and for 100, below 150 bucks for CPM 20 CV, that is really, really nice. It has a beautiful belly. Nice high flat grind, and it came very, very sharp from the ZT factory. Um, I very much enjoy carrying and using this thing. It is on the verge of being a little small for me, as you can see. But for your average user, this thing is just about the perfect size. Speaking of size, let's do some size comparisons. Of course, uh, the Rat Model 1, or in this case, the uh, <laughs> Hilltop Knives and Gear Spidey Rat is a full-size knife, and as you can see, the uh, ZT-0357 is a little bit smaller than that. I'm having some, uh, well, there's something on the blade of my Spidey Rat. Let's take a look at it up against a knife that I know to be smaller, of course, the uh, Benchmade Bug Out. Uh, handle size on these knives is very, very similar, but you just get more blade. Not a lot, but you just get more blade on the ZT, and Whereas this is S30V, this is CPM 20 CV, and these knives are about the same price. Now, this one is considerably lighter. <laughs> but, if light isn't really what you're after, this may be the choice to make. Again, I love this blade. Let's get some generalized specs out of the way. What do you get for your 150 bucks? Well, you get one, two, three, and a quarter inches of cutting on three and a quarter inches of CPM 20 CV. From just behind the flipper tab, you get one, two, three, and three quarters inches of grip, which is just exactly perfect for my hand, right? And so for most people, it's gonna be just right. There is a little bit of jimping right here, uh, you know, just above the pivot. But really, where you want to land your thumb is on this beautiful, like, cutout right here, and it lands perfectly for push cuts. The shape of this blade is good for working, you know, if you're on the mat, you get a little room between the knife and the mat, which is really good. So it's very good for draw cuts, especially across media like this. But because it's got this fantastically stabby tip, you know, I suppose if you needed to be in a reverse hammer grip, this would serve very well. But it's really good for push cuts and then drawing out. It is an excellent user all the way around. Now, the assist isn't so aggressive that you can't close this thing one hand, which is very nice, right? Now, I can. Um, some people might struggle with that a little bit, but I haven't seen anyone have that issue yet. Again, you can run this knife one-handed even with the assist, and that's very, very nice. And, of course, because of the assist, it does fire out of there with some authority, which is also sort of nice to have. The overall shape of the handle is very good in hand. 
ZT has not forgotten how to make a good user knife, which is very nice to see. It does come with a very nice deep carry pocket clip. Uh, there we go. Um, you know, the screws aren't flush, so there is a little bit of interference right there with getting it in and out of the pocket, but it's, you know, it's kind of spring to it that it's okay. I guess the end result that I'm going to get to in the end here, but we'll, I'll comment on it now, is that this is a superb pocket knife that could be a lot better. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, uh, but we'll go on from there. It does have a nice full-length G10 backspacer, a little bit of jimping back here at the end, which is just mostly, I think, reminiscent of the old 350. You know, I mean, again, unless you're really doing a lot of reverse hammer grip, that's not going to serve much, but hey, it's kind of cool looking. The G10 is milled out very nicely. It has shape to it. It's not just flat slabs, which gives it not only some character, but a little bit of area to grip, which I think is very nice. It has a marvelous lanyard hole, if you lanyard, which is cool. It's exposed, the steel liners, it's exposed steel liner uh, with a cutout right through the backspacer. And so it feels, well, it doesn't feel cheap, that's for sure, which is very nice. And if you wanted to put a lanyard on there, you could. Uh, the pocket clip is reversible. As you can see, there are two exposed holes here if you wanted to flip the clip. Because it's a liner lock, it's not really ambidextrous, but you could at least carry it left side without it being an issue, which is very nice. I like how they went with the all blacked out hardware, including the pivot. I think that's a nice touch. There is a little bit of jimping right where you want it on the flipper tab, which, you know, it's nice, but because it's assisted, not really that necessary. The spring does most of the work. I will say that the detent is firm on this, and that's good too, because often on assisted knives, you run the risk of it kind of coming open in the pocket. But this, the detent is strong enough, and there's really nothing to grab here. I have net, I have yet to have this thing come open at a time when I didn't want it to, which is a really nice... It's a good thing to be able to say about an assisted knife, let's put it that way. The overall knife, from end to end... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and three quarters. All right, just under eight inches. Uh, it's a good knife. If this was a Kershaw, it would be one of the greatest knives of all time. And I think maybe that's part of the problem. When you put ZT on the blade, at this point, people are expecting a little more than I think what you get here. But also keep in mind, this is 150 bucks for CPM 20 CV. It, it's really hard to argue with it for value, right? It is an excellent knife at that rate, at that in that range. It just is. I know it sounds like I'm struggling a little bit here, and I am. I love ZT knives. I have a fairly deep collection. When I got this, I was a little disappointed, uh, mostly because it does feel an awful lot like a really well-made Kershaw, but. That's the family tree. And to be honest, they're not producing a lot of knives in the $150 range right now. And the fact that they've done it and done a good job of it, well, maybe the complaints are just my problem, right? The knife itself is very good and should be thought of in those, along those lines. Let's go ahead and weigh it out just to see how much it weighs. Now I am outside, so the lighting's a little weird. I'm not sure how well that's going to show up, but we'll give it a shot together. 4.2 ounces. So, considering how beefy the liners are on this thing, and they are nice and thick, uh, that doesn't really surprise me. And I'm not seeing there's a little tiny bit of milling in there, but not much. Right? So this is pretty much full weight. But 4 ounces for uh, three and a half inches of, of cutting. Not terrible, considering it's a harder use design. Let's take a look at how much CPM 20 CV you get for your money. All right. We are just over three millimeters of 3 p.m. 20 CV. And again, because of this nice tall grind, it's not a high, not fully flat, right? There is some swedging across the top here and a little bit of flat, which gives it some style. It is very reminiscent. Um, of a number of their older blade shapes, or at least it's been cut to be similar. But because of this beautiful belly, you get a long way from the top of the blade to the bottom, and so it does come down to a really nice edge. I like it. In fact, the more I sit here and play with it and look at it, I'm reminded why I don't, you know, hate it. Um, 
It has some other features in, in line with the, the, the 350 that I think are cool. Uh, these screws uh, go through to nuts on this side, much like the 350. And in fact, they look to be about the same uh, in shape, if not in if not exactly the same, which means this is one long screw that goes all the way through. So there's no separate barrel spacer in here. Um, that to me, uh, in the past at least, has meant that there's less to go wrong. Uh, something I have really enjoyed about the old 350s and 300s. And the fact that they carried that over to the uh, to the 357 here was a really nice touch, for sure. The handle width at its thickest point is 11 millimeters or uh, you know, 4 tenths of an inch, 4 and a half tenths. So it's just under half an inch, right? Again, this is a really average size carry, but a good one. I don't know. What do you think? I'd love to hear down in the comments what your thoughts are on this. Is 150 bucks too much? Oh, pardon the wind there. Even though you get such excellent materials, or is $150 just about the right landing spot for a knife like this? I think it's okay, but I'm curious to see what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. This again has been the ZTO 357. I have been a Therapeutic Edge. We'll see you guys next time.